In this tutorial, we'll cover the entire workflow for editing podcasts in Descript. Check the chapters if you're looking for help with a specific element of the podcasting workflow. And if you're an existing user, be sure to check out our article on what's changed in Descript for additional help navigating the new layout. Check the description below for links. Keeping your podcasting projects organized will help you have the best Descript experience possible. How you organize your drive comes down to the kind of podcast you're making. In general, we recommend making a folder to encompass your entire podcast, and then within that folder, subfolders for different episodes or aspects of your podcast. For example, if you're working on a narrative audio series with lots of interviews that you have to sort through, you shouldn't put all of your files into a single project. Overloading projects with large files can lead to laggy performance. Once you've uploaded and transcribed your media, which I'll walk through in detail after this, you can create a single project per episode. Now let's create a new project. To ensure that this defaults to audio only, you can select audio only as your default project type from the app preferences located here. And here is a blank audio only project. These icons up here are the media insert tools. You'll find your project files here, including your multi-track sequences, which I'll explain later. Here is where you'll see your project contents. Within a project, you can have multiple compositions for versioning or organizing selects or clips, however you want to use the feature. This is your script panel, where you'll do most of your editing. This is your properties panel, which will populate with different editing options once you have your files uploaded. And down here is your timeline where you can make additional precision edits. The first step in the Descript podcasting workflow is to get your media into Descript. I'll show you an example of how to do that with some files I have on my computer. Just a note, we have integrations with a bunch of podcast recording services like Riverside and Squadcast that let you directly import your recordings into Descript. Going back to my example, first, I'll name the project. Now I'm going to upload my files. In this example, I'll be using two separate tracks that were recorded by two separate speakers for a discussion-style podcast. This process works the same way if you have two speakers or five, as long as every speaker recorded their own track, recorded with the same recording solution, like Zoom, Riverside, or in a studio, and they have the same start and end time. We'll get to cases of multiple speakers on a single track recording and files that aren't synced up for whatever reason in a separate video on troubleshooting for audio only projects. Here are my two separate files. I am selecting them both, dragging and dropping them here into the script panel. This begins the transcription process. You can choose a language here, and here is where you'll add speaker labels for each of your files. If you have multiple speakers in a single file, you can use the Detect Speakers function to listen to samples of each separate speaker and label them accordingly. It's important you take the time to label your speakers while the files are transcribing. This will help you stay organized and clearly see who is speaking throughout your transcript. Also make sure that this box saying to combine the files into a multi-track sequence stays checked. Now the files are transcribed, and you'll see everything represented here in your transcript, ready to edit. What happened in the background is that Descript created a multi-track sequence, a sort of container in which the two files are synced. This sequence lives in the background of our edit, pairing the two tracks together and letting you edit them together with the transcript. But there are times you'll need to edit just one of the tracks in your sequence like for editing out crosstalk or cutting out someone's dog barking in the background. To do so, right-click in the script panel or down here on the timeline and choose Edit Sequence. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts Shift-Command-O slash Shift-Control-O. Double-clicking the timeline also brings you to the sequence at the exact timestamp of where you clicked. This is what the sequence view looks like. I'll show you some examples of removing crosstalk and extraneous sounds. 
Here I'm using the range tool. This basically lets me select a range and then just delete whatever is contained in that range. As you make these edits in your sequence, they're reflected back in your transcript. Just be sure not to move full tracks out of sync with the other. Editing your audio really is as simple as deleting stuff from your transcript, like you would in a Word document. Let's take this line here. Feels. My gain is too high. This, this was happening last time, too. Yeah, I don't want that in the final edit. So I'll just highlight and delete it. We also have an ignore feature. Say you're collaborating on this with someone and there's a line you're not sure if you want to keep. Instead of deleting the line from your transcript entirely, just use the ignore feature to strike it out. Now when you play this back or even export the file, that line is gone, but you or your collaborators can easily select and restore it like so. In the same dropdown here, you can access other formatting options, such as highlights, which are great for organizing more complex projects, or pulling selects using our copy highlights feature in the script panel menu, which I'll show in a second. Now, before you go to town deleting and striking things out, we have some tools that help you quickly clean up the transcript so you can focus on edits of substance. These options live in the script panel menu up here. Shorten word gaps. This helps you automatically remove awkwardly long periods of silence throughout your recording. You can set however many seconds or more and it will reduce those gaps down to whatever you set here. Automatically remove or ignore filler words. First, just choose the filler words you want to ignore or remove. Apply to all, and then Descript will ignore them in your script. Copy highlights. This feature lets you copy highlighted text to your clipboard to paste into other projects or compositions. Detect transcription errors. This is a great tool for quickly cleaning up your transcript, making it more accurate for external use or just ease of editing. To use this tool, just select this, and after it processes, you'll see probable errors underlined throughout the transcript. And this is the transcript correction wizard. Now you can use the wizard to quickly listen to those probable errors and ignore or correct them. Now your transcript and recording is in a great place to begin making more substantive edits. While we're here, let's look at some more options available to you under these three dots. Convert to a video project. This is great if you want to use your podcast audio to create promotional videos, audiograms, or upload to YouTube. Jump to a specific marker. Anywhere in your transcript, you can add markers to make your project easier to navigate. Using this, you can jump from marker to marker. You can also quickly duplicate or delete the composition here. Up here, we have correction modes. By default, you're in edit mode. That means editing the transcript also edits the underlying audio. From the dropdown, you can select write or correct modes. The write tool is for writing scratch text directly into the transcript. You can then use that text to generate stock voice or overdub audio using our synthetic AI text-to-speech tool. The correct mode lets you enter transcript corrections without editing the underlying audio. Although you can do the bulk of your editing in the transcript, the timeline is always there as an option for making precision edits. Our timeline tools include Select for selecting clips, Range, which is the same as in the sequence editor, so you can select a range. Blade, this creates an edit point in the timeline, just as deleting something from the transcript creates an edit point. The hand tool, this lets you drag around the timeline without making any edits. And the slip tool, for slipping a clip to expose or hide audio. You can also do this by hovering over any edit point, such as here, waiting for these arrows to appear, and expanding or collapsing in either direction. Because Descript is a non-destructive editor, anything you've deleted isn't really gone. It's accessible for you in the timeline if you want to resurrect something. If you're using a trackpad, you can pinch in and out to zoom in and out on your timeline, 
You can also hold Command or Control plus or Command or Control minus to zoom in and out horizontally. A couple more cool things in the timeline. Using these little tabs at the edit points, we can create crossfades at two adjacent edit points or clips. Or to fade in or out, you just drag them, like so, across a single clip. We can also adjust the timing by clicking and dragging these word tabs. One option is to add moments of room tone, which is AI generated and makes the gap sound like a natural pause in speech. So I can create one of those or expand a pause by clicking and dragging to the right. If you click and drag to the left, you can also reduce awkward pauses in your script as needed. If you have a single clip selected for which you want to change the volume or the speed, you're going to navigate up here to your Properties panel. The Properties panel adjusts to surface editing options for whatever you have selected. In this instance, click the clip, click the settings, and adjust that here. You can click and drag the number setting, enter a specific number, or use the slider here. You can mute the clip by clicking mute, and also change speed if you want it to be a little bit faster or a little bit slower. Adding music or any other sound effects or audio tracks to your podcast is simple. In this example, I'm going to drop in the existing intro music for this podcast. First, I'll add a gap clip to the start of the podcast. I just do that down here in the timeline. Right-click, then add gap clip, or drag the first word tab. This adds one second of room tone, which you can turn on or off in clip settings. I can drag the clip to be longer or shorter. Here, I'll make it longer. Then I'll click here at the beginning of the timeline. Now I go up to my project files or the file on my computer and drag and drop the file where I'd like it to go. I can also drag and drop audio files right into the script. Now it's been added. It's visible as a blue track down here in your timeline. It's also indicated by this green music icon and underline in the transcript. Side note, we also have a free to use library of stock music and stock sound effects that you can access up here and add to your compositions just by selecting, dragging, and dropping them into your project. Let's give this intro a listen. Hey, I'm Tiff. And I'm Claire. Welcome to Questionable Knowledge, where we'll be revealing the juicy facts on, well, just about everything. So grab your headphones and prepare to have your mind blown. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Great. Let's adjust the volume so it's not too loud and add a little fade in and fade out. To have the music fade in or fade out, I just hover over the track and grab one of these white circles. I click and drag to fade in here at the start of the track, then click and drag to fade out at the end of the track. And maybe I want to lower the overall volume of the music just a bit. I select the track, then navigate over to the Properties panel and drag the audio level down by about five decibels. There are more options for editing just this clip here under this toggle icon. I can also hold Option or Alt and then click to add volume keyframes. If I want to shorten any music or sound effects tracks that I've added, I just hover over the end of the track, click, and drag it back to where I want it to end. Or I can shorten or extend the gap clip I added to adjust the timing. Descript has a full suite of audio editing effects. You can apply them at both the individual clip and file level. We'll have separate videos coming soon that go into more detail on our audio effects. One very useful Descript feature is Studio Sound, a non-destructive voice enhancement tool. Studio Sound is especially helpful if one of your podcast guests was using a low-quality mic, maybe calling in on their laptop mic, or in an environment with a lot of background noise. Studio Sound enhances voices and dampens background noise. Studio Sound can only be applied at the file level. To apply it to all files in your sequence, select your script track, audio effects, audio repair, Studio Sound. To apply it to just one track in your sequence, open up your sequence and select Studio Sound for just one of the files. 
Here, you can adjust the intensity of the effect as needed. Maybe you need a little, maybe you need a lot. Play around with it to find out. All right, so you have an episode edited. Maybe you want to share it with some collaborators for review, or maybe you're ready to publish it to your podcast hosting platform of choice. Descript has it covered. Publishing in Descript includes a ton of cloud-based options. You can publish your episode directly to several podcast hosting platforms. You can also publish your composition to a standalone web page. Then you can share the unique URL of your page with anyone you please. There, they can listen to your audio, read along with the transcript, and leave comments. Exporting is for exporting your files to your local drive. You can export the audio, the timeline itself if you want to non-destructively export it into another program to continue editing or mixing, or just the text transcript. Under settings here, you can adjust the file format, channels, sample rate, and normalize the volume. Here you can also add metadata or toggle it off. And those are the basics of editing a podcast into script. To recap our suggested workflow, organize your folders in the drive view, create separate projects for every episode, and distribute large volumes of media across multiple projects to avoid slow performance, upload and transcribe your audio files, clean up the transcript using our automated tools, edit out crosstalk and background noises in the sequence editor, perform other edits in the transcript and timeline, including deleting sections, adjusting timing, and adding music and sound effects, apply audio effects as needed, and publish or export your file. Stay tuned for videos that go into further detail on many aspects of the podcast and audio editing process. If there's anything you'd like to learn more about, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.